In this lesson for Nick Software's SilverFX Pro, we'll take a look at how this new software integrates within Apple's Aperture editing software. Once you've selected the image you wish to work on, you can go to Images Edit With and come down to SilverFX Pro, and that'll launch the new SilverFX Pro user interface. A quick click on the right for enlarging the window We'll take it to full screen size. Now that we're in the interface, there's a couple of things that you'll find right away. All of the controls for SilverFX Pro are on the right hand side of the interface. On the left side, you'll find there are some preset uh, styles for you to take a quick peek at. If there's something there that you like, you can use a quick select, like here is a different unusual look of the picture. Here's a dark sepia look. A lot of these are just presets that are offered to you as suggestions and as opportunities to save a little bit of time. Here's a an Holga look, for example. Unique antique look, and solarization look. And to go back to neutral, of course, you can go back to the top image. And we can close that to save a little space. Close the style browser. One click. Now, you'll notice that under the color filter area, all of these areas drop down as you click on the words or on the small triangles to give you several different options of editing. Color filter gives you the ability to take a quick look at all the aspects of the picture and as you go through the different colors, you'll see how colors are complemented here. For example, on the blue filter, the blue airplane is complemented so it's lightened and the opposite on the yellow on the wing for example. So you can find and get sort of zeroed in on what you like in terms of the overall look and then you can fine tune that with the brightness, contrast, structure sliders and then we'll go down into the specific film types and other sliders in just a moment. But what, one of the unique features of this new software is a feature called structure. Structure allows us the ability to change contrast in smaller details. In other words, the contrast slider is the overall global contrast of our image. Less contrast to more contrast. If I set it right in the middle, the structure slider on the other hand gives us less contrast or more contrast on small details. Look in the trees in the background. Look in her hair. Look at the wrinkles in her fabric on her clothing. So it really does a unique job by giving us another tool that we've not had previously. And if you come down to film types, there's a unique way here of selecting a favorite film that you've used. This is a very intuitive software. There's an awful lot to it and there's a lot of time that you'll spend within here finding the things that you like the most. Preset tones, you can adjust and select a tone, for example, and that tone, that strength of that can be increased for the silver areas which are represented by the dark areas of the picture and we can separate that from the paper or hue of the paper from the lighter areas of the scene so that I can bring this back and take the color away from the lighter areas. So there's lots and lots of control in here. Once you've made an adjustment and you've decided what you like you can click save and it takes you back into the aperture interface and what you'll find is that in the browser now on the bottom of the scene here's your original picture and then here's your edited picture. 